It's an absolute pleasure to have you here with us today. Um, I think, let's start at the very beginning. Can you take me back to 15th of November, 1992, and just tell me about what happened to you on that day? OK, well, uh, in fact, if it's a little bit before, a week before, um, I was at a traumatic period in my life. I was at a particularly low ebb. And I went to the graveside of my mum and dad, who died in 1980 and 1981 in Anfield in Liverpool, and asked them for the, my, help, you know, help me, mum, you know, I'm at a real low ebb, I don't know what to do. And a week later, uh, I wake up and see someone at the end of my bed about 1.30 in the morning. Now, I think, oh, I'm dreaming, and I sit up and rub my eyes, and this uh, person stayed there. And his eyes were fixed on mine and really intently focused on me. And uh, I panicked. I've always been a bit scared of the dark, etc., to be honest. And uh, anyway, like a child, I turned around and tried to get through the mattress and get away from him. But like a, ca a child, curiosity. And also, I, I, I said to myself, was I just imagining that or was there someone there? And I looked back. In fact, I was hiding my face with my arms over my head and I looked under my arm. And what I saw was to have the most profound effect. It was a man being taken away against his will. Now, this man was John Lennon. Now, why would John Lennon come to me? It didn't make sense. I wasn't a fan, didn't have any of his music, wasn't musical. There was no reason why he should come to me. But what was strange is that I'd asked my mum and dad for help a week before and now this guy seemed to be asking me for help and what seemed to happen I've told you I've tried to explain about the, the intense focus he had on me his eyes never left mine and I felt this transfer as if his thoughts were transferred to mine and immediately a song came into my head from nowhere called it was you now this is words and music together like a song you hear on the radio and uh, I, I just I, I was saying why me but I have to say 18 years later 350 songs later I know why he came to me he came to this non-musical person ordinary person no ego because this guy would just be would be honest and say this has happened this is the music I know so many musicians now, and every one of them, with that exception, have tried to change every song they've ever done. And, you know, you don't have what, a, a song with four beats and eight beats and ten. It's not right, Mike. And then I say, well, that's the way we've got to do it. And we do it, and they say, wow, that's fantastic. So all the way along through this journey of 18 years, it's been like a crazy roller coaster where I've been up and down, and every time I've been down, because you can imagine, it's a long time, 18 years, I've thought to myself, please, you know, what more have I got to do? And then, out of the blue, an incredible coincidence would happen, and there have been many, there have been over 50 coincidences that either people who have known John or were related in some way to him have actually come to me through coincidences. I'll give you an example. Um, one uh, example that, uh, incidentally, I always believe a picture paints a thousand words, although I'm not an artist, but to try and tell people the story, it's very complex. And there are so many sightings, so I tried to paint them, and I started painting the different sightings. Um, one of them I painted, it was a sighting that happened in 1993 called Wish I Could Fly. And by the way, when I see John, it's just like seeing you, there's no difference. The only difference is we don't talk, it's this transfer to me all the time of this music. And uh, John was standing on a street corner and in front of him was um, like a builder, a workman, with a flat cap and a sleeveless leather jerkin. And he had this unusual uh, implement, and it was like a, a big drill bit, about 18 inches wide, and it was a handle. He was turning it, and all this earth was coming out of the ground. And I looked, John was looking at the streetlight, and then he looked straight across at me. And always, as soon as he looks at me, and there's this transfer was happening, and the words and music was all complete, and it was just there, and it, the line was... I wish I could fly. All I see is the sky around me and I wish that I could fly. I'm so alone, I'm so lost and on my own, like a bird in empty sky. 
And it's a, it's a quite an angry song, and it's a screaming song. But this is what I saw. That the opening line is standing on a corner watching a man digging a hole to hell. But it's not like singing hell, he's screaming hell. And um, move forward to 2005. Bear in mind, every song I ever done, why I don't know, but I always copyrighted it the next day or the day after, or when it was done and I got it out the box. So I copyright this. This is where people will be able to look and say, well, hang on, has he just made that up because he's found this out? It's not the case in all of this. In 1993, I copyright this song. Move forward to 2005, and Cynthia Lennon brings out a book called John. And in it is a picture that she'd drawn of her wedding to John at a registry office in Liverpool. Now, there were no photographs of the wedding ever. So she's drawn this image of them standing with the registrar. And on the window outside is a road worker with a flat cap and a drill. For all the world, it's the guy that I saw in 1993, all those years ago. That's one coincidence, and it's just all... It leads me to know I'm on the right track. It seems a long time in coming, but I don't know, it just seems... It just seems right now. So... That's, that's an example.